Is that, uh -huh. is that a bill? Get some pennies. Yeah, another 60 bucks. You bring gifts. Uh, timing line and fuel and fittings for fuel. They did have a 5 16th um, fuel line fitting at a, a rally, so I can take the quarter inch one back. Those, I think, are longer. I'm pretty sure I have one of these. Oh, that helps me out a lot. How about quarter? No, you, you said oh, I'll go look, but you have to look, so I just gonna, yeah. Well, if you have it, I can take that back. We'll see how that fancy one works. It's not the one I wanted. Um, so we're back here in the garage. It's been a while since we've seen everybody. Finally got Seth Fox back behind the camera, thankfully. <laughs> uh, so we've got the TJ pulled in. We pulled the waggy out, switched gears. We're trying to make um, a Jeep invasion on the 6th in downtown OKC and rip it, we're gonna go. So we're doing a TBI to carb conversion and transmission swap and a wiring harness rebuild. Um, I say a rebuild, a brand new wiring harness from scratch. Um, and that's basically it. So the dash, we can walk around here real fast and I'll show you what we've got going. So, Seth has been kicking ass, Seth Brown, on this. So I had originally gotten this switch panel for the Waggy, and I, I rewired it where it's always got a ground uh, trigger wire for the relays. And you can use this Cat5 cable plug and one on the uh, switch panel. And you just run a Cat5 cable between the two. So ideally you'd have like your uh, your uh, relays out on the firewall and you'd run one single wire through the firewall to your uh, switch panel. So we're using it a little bit differently, differently where we've got it on the dash. So we need a shorter cable and um, it, it just kind of worked out to be very useful that way. Um, the other deal we did is we may basically all of the power come to the dash so you don't have any other power outside of that um, you can literally yank this cable that connects here you can yank that cable that connects the two and you kill all power to the jeep um, so kind of theft deterrent <laughs> um we I thought everybody knows that's okay <laughs> um i still have my ways um the transmission, we swapped from the uh, MV3500 to the 4500, and that kicked our butts. We worked on it for like nine and a half hours. We finally got it in. Um, that one was, so the gear ratio is a little bit different there. Instead of, I think the 638 ratio, this is like a 527 or something like that. So it's not a huge um, difference between those two from GM to Dodge, but, from the GM NV3500 30, to the 4500, it's like doubled in gear ratio. So we're gonna have a whole lot lower first gear. Um, and the original one from the previous video that we said won't work, it actually worked. So I was thinking that was from a Cummins, my mistake. It was a GM one, just a different gear set. So that's put in. Um, today we're going to install the drive shaft. We're going to clean up some of the wiring stuff. I think we're gonna try and install the intake tonight um, and kind of button some stuff up and then start looking at the motor build 
fuel cell in here. So this fuel cell we ordered as a TJ kit. Um, this fuel pump and everything will actually drop right into this fuel cell. We're going to probably mount it right there where it's at and then we'd put a cooler back here um, and eventually we'll probably dovetail this a little bit and do some other modifications but that gets the fuel tank right up there. Uh, we can do a firewall between there at some point but that is a quick TJ update and what we are working on. So follow along tonight as we get some stuff in order. Shout out to Seth Fox. He has kicked ass on this website. Um, I worked diligently on this website for I don't know, probably a year and a half, and he he didn't like it, and I didn't either. <laughs> so he uh, he revamped it entirely and built it basically from scratch. I had all the good information there. He just grabbed the information, switched it over. But our website is launching on Tuesday, so. Today's Tuesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Today is Tuesday. It is and why. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the website, you can find anything from how to volunteer, our current needs, like if we're looking for parts or gear or equipment, or we're just looking for anything on the list that um, if you're going to come up and ask us, hey, I, I want to volunteer, but I don't know what to do or, or what you guys can use or you want to donate anything that's the page for you uh, this takes the thinking out of it for us because sometimes we get guys up asking us what they can do for us and we don't always have a specific task that correlates with our mission or what they can do doesn't correlate with the mission that we have so this page allows everybody the opportunity to donate or um, put their their time and effort into our organization um, you can also find about us and um, everything that, that we're doing. Um, this page is 100% transparency. So we haven't filed our 1023 yet or our, our tax exempt forms and whatnot yet. So we are in the midst of doing that. And once our first year of taxes filing are done, that will actually be on the page for the public to see. So I said 1023, I didn't, I didn't mean that. Um, so there's a lot of stuff on there that if you're just curious about the organization, what we do, who we are, and, and what funds are going to, and what we're doing, like that is the central location to find it all without having to come up and ask us and uh, really curious. So be on the lookout for that. You can also find some YouTube videos, some uh, eventually we'll have a gallery on there, and a few other odds and ends to really catch people's attention. So. Shout out to Seth Fox for that one. Uh, he's done a killer job on it, and that will be released Wednesday for everybody to check out. All right, so the car we're putting on this is a little bit different. Most people are going to see this and think it's, well, I don't know what they're going to think because it's, it's different, but this is a Predator carb. It is a variable venturi carburetor. It uses engine vacuum to move flaps in the top right here that open up and as those open up they allow more fuel to go in and it's very simple to tune and operate there's only a couple screws on the outside there's no jets and the magic is behind this plate this is also the fuel bowl so this cam right here, this is the fuel cam. It's attached to those blades. So as that moves, it allows that spool valve to move up and down. The spool valve's right there. So you can actually make a new cam or you used to buy them. This is uh, kind of hard to get parts for now, but a different shape to get different fuel curves. 
as throttle opens up. This is your float, you know, your inlet here. And then this one has the idle control circuit, which is in here that not all of them have. Uh, this one allows you to tune the idle down a little bit lower uh, to closer to 600 RPM instead of more around 1000 RPM. But stupid simple. And it's a perfectly square footprint. So these carbs are actually, you can position them with the bowl on any side of your intake. And this one, what we're doing, we're doing it to the front. And the idea behind that is on an incline, fuel is still going to be at in the bottom back corner of the bowl where the pickup is. So ideally, starvation issues should be minimal. And a lot of guys ran these for years in monster trucks, mud trucks, in uh, the like Iceland in their off-road racing that they do, which is crazy. And Bigfoot ran them too. So they're really good. They're stupid simple. I think a lot of people aren't sure about it because they're so much different than a Holly style carburetor that this is kind of voodoo. But for what we're doing, it should be great. It's uh, also what we had. I rebuilt this in 2013, and this is the car we used to run on a sand drag car. And uh, well, it's what we had. It'll be better than the TBI. I mean, definitely not worse than the TBI. And uh, maybe it'll uh, prove to be so good that. You know, it doesn't want, nobody wants to take it off, but it'll get us by and also to, you know, strike up some conversation and uh, maybe some, uh, some talk on about it. But NHRA outlawed them back in the seventies, I believe, because Holly said that they were too similar to fuel injection. So there's, there's a lot of history to them and uh, so a little bit of drama and it's, it's a predator, predator carb. It's like you still have the computer involved, but I don't think the computer operated nope. timing. You just no, had right. external. I think you were just saying like this where the wire is coming in. I need to do some more research on it because if we could take that distributor and just put a different cap on it, then this would work fine. I mean, cap and rotor. Yeah, but, but we got to see. And the HEI had a bit of uh, oil in there instead of external. Yeah, it's on top, and then it's got a. Um, but I mean, even then, we can use the one we have. We know what pin out that is. Yeah. Just throw 12 volts for coil so it's hot all the time. We can kick ignition on. Yeah. And then run that over. Yeah, we could put it to do that too. I mean, where's the dead pliers? I need them. Where'd you leave them last? In this garage. <laughs> I, thought, I saw a red handle. I thought that was them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did too a couple times. So that's where I took everything out. All right. Your side was pretty thick. So, I talked a little bit about what we've done to the TJ. What we still have left before the sixth is this list. So, got to believe the clutch, charge battery. Our, our big ones are distributor, intake, fuel pump, um, fill drivetrain stuff, uh, spark plug wires, fuel filter. I mean, these are like necessities. Um, this was what we started with. We part some stuff off, we buy this list. This is our long-term list. So in the future, what we're looking at doing, um, building a center console, we're adding in an extra brace under the dash, um, harness mounts, building new harness mounts. We got brand new harnesses thanks to Jeff Schmidt. Um, shout out to him. Um, we're going to build a new shock tower. So the previous owner had put one in, but he made it out of angle and it's just, it's not ideal. He also angled the shocks like this. So I actually have one shock that the mount completely sheared off of. Um, so we're gonna point it back up straight where they need to be. When you, when you tilt them in like this, like they work, yes, but you throw off all the valving inside. So shocks are tuned um, with all the valving inside from like a harder, um, a harsh tuning to a soft tuning and if we, and other shocks have like a soft tuning to a harsher tuning and if you don't have as much travel there or you're not using a certain portion of the shock where you just have a different um thing of like a fulcrum um different leverage on them then it throws off all the valving so we're going to change that put them back up straight um we got to add in bump stops limit straps um 
uh, an oh shit handle for the passenger guys. We're gonna add in a window net, two doors. Um, we're gonna throw in a aluminum roof because it, it gets hot with the sun beating down on you. Um, we're doing two kill switches. We're throwing in some fire safety, dovetailing the rear. Um, tow points, so we want to um, beef up all the tow points on this. We don't know what exactly it's gonna be used for. Uh, we know that like when we're out at, at dirt fest or big events, we want to be able to get to anybody and everybody that we need to, whether it's just rollovers or somebody's, you know, crash or they need a lift out of the trail or whatever the case may be, we want to be able to use our vehicles to do so. So we're going to beef up all the tow points on this and help with that structurally. Um, we're adding in a chase light and I think we're going to get with psychotic lighting for that one. And then the gulp built tilt steering column so we're actually the tj has its stock steering column in it right now and it is crappy like i can barely get out of the the jeep because i'm i'm jumping over a seat bolster at the same time i'm clearing a diag door bar but then the column is like right in my lap it doesn't tilt so we're actually going to take the column entirely out and build our own tilt steering column um, and then do a quick release wheel and all that sort of stuff. So then anybody can jump in it and it's not just built for, you know, one guy. So, um, right now we're in the middle of Seth is getting the intake ready to go on. I painted some valve covers out there. And then if you check out this fuel regulator, so we've got fuel coming in, fuel going out. We're using the stock uh tj fuel pump that's internal to the tank so the idea is later on in the future is we can go efi with this and then we can keep this fuel regulator here to run the carburetor so we're pushing what 60 psi is what the the uh intake pump should be pushing this regulates it down from like four to seven psi so the carburetor can handle it um we'll have two gauges on it so we can monitor it as well so he's working on that. And then I've still got to throw the drive shaft in and button up some other odds and ends. So we're getting closer, um, but it is definitely taking a little while to get there. So we've been out here till like 2.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, like working like crazy. Um, I don't know how Seth over here is still awake because he's out here all the time. <laughs> uh, I can't keep up with him. So we're gonna get get busy doing that um and that's kind of the update of where we're going with the tj and kind of the current situation i am figuring out what wires do what going back to the back so then i can wire up and over to my power outs or any grounds or anything i need to do um but there's been stuff that's been scabbed in uh this g so i just kind of got to decipher it and go from there Mm -hmm. Scrape since you never brought in razor blades, so we've got to finish scraping that shit. I thought you got one. Yeah, but it's it's like old. It, it, I, I was using it to cut zip ties since I didn't have flush cuts yet. And that needs new razor blades. We need razor blades. We need razor blades. You need razor blades. Smells fruity over here. Well, that's where Seth's been, so. <laughs> He's calling you fruity. I, I was in the infantry and I did wrestle up in the collar, so. Where the what my wife calls me. I, <laughs> everybody's a little gay. <laughs> what you yeah. I said, I what my wife calls me. <laughs> They're like, everybody's a little gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to. Did, did you see what I, uh, my idea if we have to cut the hood, what to do to protect the air cleaner? Uh -huh. So like a dirt late model, um, uh, air cleaner, like hood kind of cow. Okay. It'll deflect air and mud and water away from the front of it, but uh, it'll be cool. Yeah. Something like that on the hood. Oh, okay, yeah. To just deflect air around it and keep it protected. That would be kind of cool. But kind of class it up a little bit too. Do you too. have any photos of it like installed on something? Because it's hard, like just seeing what the hood looks like, it's kind of hard to... Ultra 4 core. 
Oh, that's pretty sick. Yeah. So something like that. That's pretty cool. And they make them in different heights. So mm -hmm. depending on how high it sticks out, we can kind of match. Nice. I mean, that'd be a, I mean, those are like 40 to 60 bucks. A lot cheaper than a whole new hood that we then got to recut out and everything. You know? Yeah, true. I do want to put like the expanded metal or the yeah. perforated metal behind this. But I think we got to cut that one to match if we move this. Cut it. Whoa. Or just leave it. Like, I, I do like the fact that there's one there and then we'll, I want to put one under there too. But if we do do that, uh, just to protect the sharp edges, mm -hmm. uh, to do, <laughs> and put some type of foam, like rubber surround around that sheet metal to, uh, yeah. so if you can still reach in, but not cut yourself. That reminds me, I gotta get to Lowe's and get some of that uh, weather stripping stuff to go along with it. Yep. Just to cut our hands, put it up. And then. And then? And then. I suppose I'll go get a razor blade and start ripping the <laughs> Multiple. What do you need to scrape? <laughs> oh, oh that freaking hurt. You all right? That really hurt. Oh, and another thing, big thing we got to do is, you know, <laughs> You're uh, right. do get, that. get the fuel cell mounted, get this one out. Sorry, I'm going to swallow my tongue when I sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> hurt. My tongue like plugged the airway. <laughs> it's a bunch of pressure in the back of my throat. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we need to do that. If you don't laugh when your friends get hurt, like, are you really friends? I can just go and start <laughs> swapping stuff over. I love watching other people get hurt. <laughs> we need to get the field installed. We need to get the adapter bracket for this installed on here. All that stuff ready to drop that in. Agreed. Um, Cause all of that can go on and then before we mount it. What were we putting here? Uh, a cap. I do not have a cap that size. Cool. No cap? We can get one. No cap. Oh shit. We can get one. Okay. And for now, I mean, it's not ideal, but for now we can. Did I use that term right? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Too old. It's capped for now. <laughs> it's, it's capped for now. Mm -hmm. At least with some threads, you want. Not all that one. Just don't fill it up all the way. Well, that's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna know when it's not full. <laughs> you know what's full when it's coming out under the cap. <laughs> exactly. There's so much redneck science going on right now. And then, <laughs> and then all my pretty, my pretty purple is that you stuff. still got to redo. Yeah, well, I painted this, and it was cold out, and the paint was cold. Oh, I'm and sure so that I got, So it shrunk. <clears throat> I'm showing you guys my imperfections here, so don't judge. I got a couple runs. Uh, the top looks great. It actually in the light. I had the runs today. Yeah. <laughs> Not the same kind. <laughs> so in the light, you can actually see it changes colors to green. Oh, neat. Oh, yeah. I see that in there. That looks really cool. Um, yeah, a crap load of runs. So we're going to redo these. I'm actually thinking I'm going to take them probably to Powder Rangers or somebody to have them powder coated. Somebody qualified. Yeah, somebody to qualified. Um, because I can paint, but... I'd rather have them powder coated. And then the tank, should we polish that tank? Or just leave it brushed sure, aluminum? The tank. The aluminum though? Well, once we get fuel in it, that'd be kind of hard to... No, bake, bake it. Or yeah. just leave it how it is. I like the polished look, or the like bare metal look with the painted accents, personally. Yeah, we could do the, the motor build logo instead of color. Yeah. It's also, amazing. if uh, as long as like it'll be easier to see leaks and stuff if we don't have to paint it, unless unless you paint it white. I couldn't do white. I just like the look of brushed brushed metal or like bare metal. If I could have the cage bare metal, if I could this whole thing could be bare metal, I would do it. One hundred percent. Well, you can. Cyber G. You just, there's a All lot famous. of yeah. like a lot. A lot of guys that are out in the drier climates, their cages are bare, and um, but they have to scotch brite them and rub WD-40 on them all the time. I was gonna say they they have competitions to show off like weld work and 
not this weld. Um, <laughs> but when you're like a solid welder fabricator, they do like the whole body and everything's bare and they take it to these shows and just like spray WD-40 over the entire thing just to show it off and keep it from rusting. We, we just gotta find a guy that can do that. I know how to run you a You would can. think we had a master fabricator in, in house. Well, you think I would be given the chance to do it yet, but I have What's stopping you? So I'm wondering, so I've got- You guys are getting paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got tail and turn, but well, I don't have a brake either. I should have, there should be a brake tail and turn. I think you have brake. I don't think you have tail. Okay. Well, that's the only wires that go back here that aren't. Is there a brake switch? Fuck off, man. Because I would tell you right there, like, it, it might have been eliminated. You're not wrong.